everyone, I'm Bob Wormsley from Insidium. And in today's free tutorial, we're gonna look at a really interesting technique. I'm gonna walk you through how you can use animated textures to emit from particles using UV emission data. Let's have a look at what we can create. So we've got this nice particle advection, but it's a glimmering and glittering of this fantastic animated texture that we're able to map to our particles using the UV emission data. It's a fantastic look. Let's jump into Cinema 4D and see how we can get this set up. So we'll bring in a plane object and that plane object, we're gonna put a material on and this is what we're gonna emit from. So let's just get the X particles ready. We'll go to the X particles menu and we'll go to system, bring in a new system and the emitter will come in as a default rectangle emitter spitting them out in the Z axis. So let's just change that in the emitter. We'll go to the object tab and we'll go to the emitter shape and change it to object. Then we can drag in our plane, which will become the emission object. Now you can see the particles are coming off the surface. So let's just have a look. Well, that's not what we want. We'll go to the emission first. And let's get rid of the speed. Zero speed. We only want them to emit on the first frame. So let's put it to shot. And let's just say 10,000 particles for now. That'll do. Okay. And there we go. Now you can see that those are being emitted from the polygon centers. If I hit and D for the lines. There's a particle in every polygon center. That's not what we want. So let's just go emit from polygon area and hit spawn again. So there we go. So we've got our particles now emitting on the surface of this plane. Let's just get rid of that X particles icon. Okay. Excellent. Right, so how do we emit from a animated texture and give those UV coordinates to the particles so we can kind of effectively stick that animated texture to them? Well, first of all, we need a, a material on the object itself. So let's just double click here and create a standard Cinema 4D material. And I'm going to drag that onto the plane. And then what we're going to do in the color channel of the material is let's bring in a texture. So I'm going to bring in the best way you can do this with any animated texture. So it could be an animated noise, it could be an animated effect, surface, whatever, or it could be, you know, a, a, an MP4. So I'm going to use this one. And this is Mario's FMX 2018 trailer, which has got some stunning particle effects in. And we're just going to bring that one in. So let's just hit open. And now it is on here. So I know this uh, video is 16 by 9, the aspect ratio. So let's just get the plane to match that. So let's make it um, uh, 1980 wide by 1080 tall. There we go. That's not 1980, is it? It's um, 1920. Excellent. There we are. And so now we've got that video on our plane but if i hit play it's not playing so we have to set things up here so let's go back onto our material let's click on the texture itself here which opens up the controls now we want um, it automatically works out how long it is and it's got the frame rate which has worked out correctly here as well i want to start it from about frame 200 we might alter this so now you can see it's um, changed slightly, but if we hit play, it's not animating. Why is it not animating? Well, we just have to go to the editor tab in our material and click on animate preview. Okay, and now hit play. So there we go. If I just make those particles invisible. So now we've got this video playing on our plane. Okay, so that's obviously nothing to do with X particles. You can do that in Cinema 4D and it doesn't give us anything new. But we've got this really nice scene here, which is going to give us some interesting effects once we kind of map these to our particles. Great. So now what we're going to do is make our particles be emitted from this video. So how do we do that? Let's go back to the emitter. And we will, instead of emitting from the polygon area on the emitter, let's click on that, we're going to emit from texture. And when I hit texture here, a new tab appears, texture. So let's just click on that. And now it's saying which texture tag do you want to emit the particles from? So let's drag in the material. Now at the moment it's saying the emission channel for particles is going to be based on the color channel of this material. 
and the color of the particles is going to be based on the color channel as well. So what that means is, let's just make the plane invisible. What that means is that it's only going to emit particles which are 50% gray and lighter, and then it won't emit particles, so it won't emit any black particles, for example, and then it'll get the color for those particles from the color channel. But we don't want to kind of disclude the black particles. We want just to emit everything. So I'm just going to put the emit channel to none, so it'll just every single particle will, um, will emit from this plane. So now if I hit play, it's kind of there. We have got these particles which are looking the same as the video. Let's just make those particles bigger. We'll go to the display tab and let's, instead of them being dots, they can be squares, which will fill it out. So there, you can see that we've got the first frame of our video, but it's not animating. Even though the texture is animating, the particles aren't. And that's because they don't have the information to do that yet because they're being generated on frame one and then they're just staying in that initial state. We need them to update per frame. So the way we do that is we use a color modifier because that gets calculated every frame. So let's go to modifiers and we'll go to control modifiers and let's bring in a color. And let's go to the color modifier in the object tab. So we don't want to set the color immediately. If we do that, all the particles will just turn white because we've got white selected here. That's not what we want. So we'll click on this. We want to use texture tag. So let's click on that and it says which texture tag do you want to use so let's drag in our thing again and we want to use the color channel so now if we hit play well it's it's better and worse at the same time because now we have some animation but the particles just seem to be randomly getting the colors from anywhere on that plane they don't know where they're supposed to be positionally and that's because the particles don't have any UV information. They're not getting it from the plane. And that's what we need to do. We need to give the particles the UV information from the plane, which will then map this texture correctly. So this is the trick. We need to go to the emitter, to the extended data tab. And in the other data, there is a UV emission data, which we can select. Now, this isn't selected by default because often you don't need this and it just means that each particle would needlessly be carrying around lots of data which could slow down sims unnecessarily so it is left as a checkbox you only put it on should you need it and in this instance we do so let's click it on and now it looks like it is working i'm just going to dolly in let's just emit some more particles let's do what are we on let's do a hundred thousand particles and there we go. So now we've got our animated texture and these are individual particles, these. And you can see they're changing their color per frame. So we have got this fantastic plane of Mario's amazing graphic on our particles. So those are the steps that we need to make to get particles to be able to respect these animated textures and know where they are in kind of 3D space to ensure that they are mapped correctly. Now we'll move on to the rest of the tutorial in a minute and look at how we can advect those particles and do a bit of bullet time. But just before we do, there's an awful lot you can do with this type of information. So we're going to be using this just to kind of create a really nice kind of glitchy colored effect in our advected particles animation. But you can do much more with this data. Now we've got varying different brightness levels on our particles. We could maybe map those. So there's some really nice examples of this in Mario's um, content repository files, which you can look at. But just to demonstrate, let's go to modifiers. Let's bring in a motion modifier and a rotator object. So look, it's rotating all of those particles and it looks a bit naff. That's not what we want. What I'm going to do is rotate that rotator by 90 degrees so it's going to spin on that axis it's like it's spinning on the um, y-axis now so they're all spinning at the same rate but if I go to my rotator and go to the mapping let's just adjust this and limit that rotation to specific particles we'll go to add to add a map we're going to map the rotation speed and let's map it to not the age of the particle but the color brightness. 
So now what should happen is the darker particles shouldn't rotate very much and the lighter particles should rotate more. Let's have a look. So you can see that we're getting quite an interesting effect as that animates on. In fact, look, these first few frames, I don't really like. I wanted to start here, so that's 37. So let's just adjust where this... Um, Let's adjust where this video starts. Let's hit on the material, go to the color tab, click on the texture and start frame. We want to do 200 plus, what was it? Plus 37, wasn't it? Was it? Th yeah, plus 37. Okay. So now it's going to start at that point. That's what I want. And now you can see the rotator is only rotating those particles with 100% color value. And you're getting these incredibly interesting looks that would be almost impossible to kind of art direct um, if we weren't doing it via this method. Um, so that's and that's obviously just the rotator, which gives that interesting look. Um, let's just switch that rotator off. And obviously you can map any modifier. So let's just put a bit of um, turbulence in there. Let's do a turbulence. Let's add a map and we'll do the strength of the turbulence to the color brightness. So now we're only getting those brighter particles being affected by the turbulence. Let's just turn the strength up a bit so it's a bit more noticeable. So only the bright ones are being affected by the turbulence and the rest of them aren't. And we could even add that rotator back in. And we're getting kind of that really intricate, odd look, which um, you wouldn't be able to do if we weren't getting this really interesting animated UV colour data. Okay, so that's basically how the UV emit works and how you get it set up. So now let's set up this nice advection scene so we can recreate Mario's fantastic look. We'll start a new scene for that. So let's bring in a plane to this new scene. Here's our plane. And what we're going to do is emit particles from this. And we need to put a texture on because we're going to animate that to get this glitch effect. So we'll double click in our material area here to create a default Cinema 4D material. And let's stick that on our plane. Then if we go to the color channel of that material and the texture window, we'll put a Cinema 4D noise. And there's our noise. And let's just click on this thumbnail, which gives you the editing set, uh, settings. Let's change it from the default noise to let's try fire. All right. And I'm going to put that global scale up to, say, 700. So if I hit animation speed, say, I don't know, 0.5 and hit play. Right. So we're getting a nicely animated uh, noise. OK, that's where we're going to emit our particles from. Excellent. So let's set up the particles. We'll go to the X particles menu. Let's bring in a system and the default emitter. Let's go to the object tab to the emitter shape and change it from rectangle to object. And then I'm going to drag in my plane. Good. So we're not going to, uh, we don't need to set the texture colouring settings in the emitter because remember we're going to use a modifier to do that because we want to do it every frame so the particles change with the animated noise. So let's just change the rest of the settings. We'll go to the emission tab of the particles and let's take away the speed. Let's change the emission mode from rate to shot. And we'll start with 100,000 particles. We might have more, we might have fewer. I'm not sure yet. And in the display, I'm just going to change the editor display from dots to squares. So now if I hit play, we've got particles and they have been born. Let's make the plane invisible. They've been born on the, is it the polygon centers or is it the vertices? Polygon centers, which isn't what we want. So let's go to the object tab of the emitter and change it from polygon center to polygon area. And there we go. So now they're covering that play nicely. So what are we going to do now? We need to get these particles to respect the animated texture of this plane. So we do that with a modifier, remember? So we'll go to the modifiers menu, control modifiers, and we'll bring in a color. Now, at the moment, it's set to set color immediate. So if I go to the color and just change this to any of these, It'll update in real time because this modifier will update this color every frame. 
So obviously we don't want to just change color. So let's go to the color operation section and change it from set color immediate to use texture tag. Click on that. Let's drag in our texture tag from the plane. So it's kind of, we can see it's animating and it's sampling the colors from that texture, but it hasn't got the coordinates right. So that's because we need to activate those UV coordinates in the emitter, remember. So let's go to our emitter, to the extended data tab. Let's just pull this up a bit. And we need to go and activate UV emission data. Let's click on that. And as it resets, now we have got our particles respecting the color changes of that animated noise. And it's uh, spot on. Fantastic. So that's our particle setup. This is, this is what's going to give us our glitch effect, um, the animated noise. So the way in which we're going to get our particles to move up and kind of retine them and do that nice kind of slow motion look is we're going to do an Exposure FX explosion and we're going to use the velocity of that explosion to move those particles around. So let's just, uh, we'll re rename that emitter first. Let's just rename it emitter uh, advected because they're going to be advected by the by the explosion. And I'll just switch that off for now. Great. So what do we need to make this explosion? Well, first of all, we need the Exposure FX Dynamic Solver. So let's go to the Dynamics tab and we will choose Dynamics and let's choose an Exposure FX Solver. And we get our Exposure FX Grid and all of the explosion has to take place within the bounds of this cube. And you can see it's got this grid on the back and that's telling you the voxel resolution. The smaller the voxel size means the more voxels in the grid, which means a much higher resolution simulation, but it'll take much longer to solve. So we've got our plane here. This is where our particles are going to be um, born from. And we want the explosion to happen under the particles and then to push them up. So we're going to need a little bit more headroom here. So let's move that up. We want a little bit more width. And we'll do a bit more width on this side. So that's probably enough. Let's just move it up a little bit more. So now I've drastically increased the size of this box but the voxel sizes remain the same. So effectively, I've hugely increased the simulation density of this area um, because I haven't made the voxel grid size any bigger. So this is going to take forever to simulate. And we don't need it to be this detailed because we're not rendering the volume. We're not rendering the smoke and fire. We're just using the velocity information to push particles around. So we don't need this resolution. So let's go to the solver tab of our exposure effects and let's increase that voxel size way up. Okay, so that is far fewer voxels, which means it's less accurate, but it'll, it'll simulate much more quickly. And this will probably give us enough detail at this size, a voxel size of 10 centimeters. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to um, create some particles. We're going to make a, a particle blast, and those particles we're going to give fuel, and they're going to make the explosion. So let's go to our emitter tab and create a new emitter. I'm just going to bring it near the bottom. Let's go to the object tab of that emitter. We're going to change the emitter shape from rectangle to circle, which uh, gives us this look. Ah, now can you see our particles are black and grey? That's because our colour modifier is affecting this emitter as well as our advected emitter, and we don't necessarily want that. So in our new emitter, let's go to the modifiers tab, and we've got an exclusion list here. Let's drag in our colour modifier. So that's been excluded, and now they're just our born green particles. Good. So let's go back to the emitter, object tab. So we want these to be firing upwards. So let's put the plane to the plus Y. So now they're going upwards. We want to reduce the size of this way down to say, I don't know, like two centimeters. I want a cone. If I, if I hit play now, you see the firing upwards. And if we increase the cone angle, it fires them out like that. But what I want to do is add a bit of cone angle variation. And the way we do that is we have to have ring only selected. And now we get a cone angle variation amount. Let's ramp that way up. And this is going to give us a really nice irregular blast. Yeah, that's great. That's going to work. 
So now we only want these to blast for a short amount of time. So let's go to the emission tab. Let's change the emission mode from rate to shot. Um, let's keep it at a thousand for now. We don't want these particles to live forever. We just want them to blast fuel for a little amount of time. So let's uncheck that and we'll give them a life of, I don't know, maybe like eight frames with a variation of three. So now we're getting this blast. Great. And the last bit of variation we're going to give to this blast is we're going to give them a, a varied speed. So by default, they're all going at 150 centimeters per second. So let's just say put 100 variation. And now we've got a really varied blast. OK, so now we need to set these particles on fire. So the way we do that is it's a two stage process. First of all, we need to give them some fuel. So let's go to the extended data tab of the emitter. We'll go to the physical data tab and we'll give them, let's just start with, I don't know, two fuel. It's st they still won't blow up because now we need to give this emitter a tag so it can communicate with our exposure effects object. So let's go to tags, X particles tags, exposure effects source, leave everything as default, hit play and see what happens. All right, so there is a small animation. So what can we do to make that better? Well, first of all, let's do a few things. Our Exposure FX domain has a voxel size of 10 centimeters. So in our emitter, let's match our particle radius to that. So let's put that up to 10. Let's increase the amount of particles to 10,000. Okay. That's looking good. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want this fluid to respect the particle velocity. And if we go to the emitter tag, we can see it has 100% velocity. Let's ramp this way up, which should get this fluid following the velocity a little bit more. Okay, that's better. And this is running quite smoothly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reduce this voxel size a little bit. Let's put it down to, say, 8. OK, that's giving us more flu uh, fuel. So I think we could maybe have these moving a bit faster. Let's go to our emitter. Let's put this up to, say, 200 with 150 variation. That's looking nicer. Let's see, could we have them spurting out a little bit more? Let's go to the object tab of our emitter. We've got a cone angle of 18. Let's put that up to 25 um, with a 40 variation. Nice. So that's looking like quite a nice little explosion. And if you imagine, this plume is what the shape of our advected particles are going to look like. Now, I just want to make sure that we've got enough depth here and enough irregularity in this shape. So here's what we can do. We can... Let's rotate this emitter so it's going to just spurt out a little bit in that direction. We can maybe do that slightly more good and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and I'm going to copy that emitter so we've got two now and I'm going to rotate that one the other way to see if this makes it look a little bit more irregular let's have a play okay so that's looking pretty nice. And might just try putting, going to both of my emitters, go to the extended data tab, try just giving them a little bit more fuel, see what happens. Yeah, that's looking nice. Excellent. So that'll probably do us for now. We can make some adjustments, but that's looking quite nice. Let's just finally go to the emission of both. And I'm just going to... I'm just going to add more speed variation. 
yeah, because I just wanted some of it to hang around a little bit more at the bottom. That's looking good. So for now, that's going to do with the explosion. And we're going to make a couple of tweaks because we're going to want to retime this in a bit. But let's just get an idea of how this is looking when we are advecting our particles. So I'm going to reactivate my emitter advected particles. So now they're all born. Now, if I hit play, these particles aren't going to get advected. Nothing's happening with them. So what's going wrong? Well, we need to tell them to be advected by the explosion. So let's just make the exposure effects invisible. And in the exposure effects, we have an advection tab. So let's click on this and click advec particles. Just leave it as standard for now and see what happens. Now, something weird's happened. It's advecting the particles, but the explosion doesn't seem to be following that shape that we had previous. Let's just make the exposure effects visible again. Let's hit play. Now, our explosion's gone all weird. Why's our explosion gone all weird? Well, that's because our emitter particles, which are the smoke and fire ones, they're also being advected by the smoke and fire they're creating, and it's messing up that um, messing up that explosion. So what we need to do is exclude our exposure effects emitters from being advected. So the way we do that, let's select both emitters. We'll go to the modifier tab of those emitters, and let's drag in the exposure effects so they won't be advected by it. Let's have a look now. So now we've got our explosion back as it should be, and it's only advecting our other particles. So let's just make the exposure effects invisible. So here we go, we're kind of getting there now. There's our simulation, and they're getting advected up, and that's looking really nice. So here, because we have our advection set to set mode, so basically these particles are inheriting perfectly the exposure effects, when they reach the top of the domain, we're getting this clipping. And then, so what we're going to do is put this outside of our render view. Um, but at the moment, I don't think we've quite got enough room to get our, our full kind of animation. Let's have a look. We want to be about this zoomed in. That's looking nice. So we want these particles to be able to get up higher before they clip the top. We want this clipping to be outside of the frame. So what we need to do is readjust the size of that exposure effects grid. Let's pull that way up. There we go. Let's make that invisible again. So we're getting this really nice advection of these particles. And they're going to make their way up all the way to the top and we're not going to see them clip. Very nice. All right, so we're kind of getting there. This is looking pretty decent. So what are we doing? Um, we have, so let's just make it more obvious, the animation of this noise. Because remember, these particles are supposed to be um, respecting the animation changes of this noise. So what I'm going to do, just to make it more obvious, I'm going to clip this noise to make it really bright. And let's increase that animation speed and see if we can see them flashing in our in our simulation. Let's have a look. So there, we can see them flashing, they're changing colour as that noise is animating, and we're getting this really nice glitch effect. Now it might change the noise type because this is looking a little bit too subtle. We want it to be much more glitchy as it changes colour, but that's uh, working quite well. It looks like we've got some stuck particles here, so let's just have a look at our exposure effects domain, and I think we perhaps are going to have to... Yes, yeah, so, so they're getting trapped on the width. So let's just take our domain and make it a bit wider so we're not getting any particles trapping when we're kind of zoomed in. All right, good. So let's just... Let's forget about the colour for now. So I'm just going to switch off that colour modifier. Now what we want to do is retime our particles. So we have them coming up. But then we want them to stop and go into a nice kind of slow motion and then continue up. So how do we retime this? Well, we, we need to do two things. We need to both retime the exposure effect sim and we need to do another bit of retiming for it to work properly. 
So let's demonstrate. We'll retime the exposure effect sim first. So let's say at this point, at frame 80, we want the sim to stop or to go into slow motion. How do we do it? Well, the way in which we're going to do it is in the exposure effects, we can go to the simulation tab and we have a simulation speed setting and it's set to 100%, which is real time. But we can keyframe this down. So let's try that. So at frame 82, I'm going to hit keyframe. And then I want this to kind of, should we try ramping it into a slowdown rather than just immediately slowing down? So then let's go to say frame 100 and put that way down to 10%. So let's just make those particles invisible, the advected ones. And let's just have a look at this. So this should remain full speed. And when we get to these keyframes, it should then slow down to a crawl. So that's really nice, isn't it? It's still moving, still animating, but only very slowly. So we could completely stop it if we went down to zero. That would be fine if you wanted to do one of those kind of bullet time shots. But I, I quite like it slowly moving. So let's get a feel for it. So it's stopping, stopping. This is where we're going to do the real erratic glitchiness of the shader change. And then, boom, on 220, we want to ramp this back up. So let's put another keyframe, a few more frames, and then back up to 100 and add another keyframe. So let's have a look and get a feel for this. There it goes and ramps down to stop. We're going to get nice, flashy, glitchy particles here, which is going to look really cool. And then vroom, back to full speed. Fantastic. So it's easy as that to read time your exposure effects sim. But what happens if we add vector particles now with that read time sim? Let's have a look at what happens by default. So it's kind of working OK, kind of working OK. And then it doesn't really work. The particles are still moving at their kind of full speed as the fluid slowed down and it's it's kind of lost its shape. It looks OK. Let me just show you one thing. You see all our particles are completely black, even though we've got our color modis modifier switched off. That's because in our exposure effects domain under the advection tab, all of this data that's been created by exposure has been passed on to the particles, the smoke, the burn, the temperature, the velocity, color and UV. So the color data has been passed on to the particles and we're not we're not actually producing any color data. Look in the solver, I've got color switched off, which means that it's just making the particles go black. So I can switch off that color. In fact, I can switch off all of these apart from the velocity. The velocity is the only information we need to pass on to the particle, which is the movement. So now these should stay green. OK. But we get to the retime bit and it's not working properly. And that's because we need to do an additional step. We need in our emitters, let's just highlight both, uh, in the object tab, we need to retime the emitter to match the retiming of the exposure effects. Now, we could just keyframe this amount in the same place in the timeline as we had with exposure, but there's a much quicker and easier way of doing this. And this is, if you've never used any Expresso before, this is probably the easiest way to get into the power of what Expresso can do for you. And the way I'll show you now, actually, is all completely automated. So um, it's not complex at all. So what we want to do is this. We want to go to our simulation tab. We want to say, whatever happens to this slider is copied and happens in the emitters retiming slider as well. So the way we do that is, it's dead easy. If you right click on this parameter that we've keyframed in the exposure effects, right click, expression, set driver. And then what we do is go to our emitter advected uh, particles. And let's go to the object. And we need to go to the retiming. And let's right click expressions set driven absolute. And can you see that an expresso tag has been created automatically for you? And all this is saying is whatever happens to our exposure FX setting here, it will be mirrored here. You can see this little black triangle that's saying that it's it's um, it's being driven by expresso. So if I hit play now, let's just make 
The exposure is invisible. Let's go. So now we're getting it. Look, see the retown value has gone down to 10%. It's respecting the simulation speed of the exposure. And then it's advecting upwards. Fantastic. And that is happening because we have set um, an expression. The driver in the exposure effect sim speed is driving the retiming speed of our particles. Fantastic. And now we're getting this kind of bullet time look that we want. So this is when it's, it's actually, I, I don't like it ramping down. I think I want it to, to stop very ab abruptly. Um, so I was wrong in spacing out those keyframes. So let's go to my exposure effects uh, object. And I can see here is the offending keyframe. Let's put that way down. I just want it to almost snap to that new speed. Let's try again. So really fast. Whoop. Stop. And then it ramps up again. So you can mess around and do whatever speed you want. You can make it completely freeze. You can make it go incredibly slowly, whatever. But I'm going to keep that as it is. OK, so that's looking good. So now we have got our particles working. That's looking good. Fantastic. So let's get our colors back up and running then. So we'll reactivate our color modifier. Let's kind of start getting a, a camera angle that we think is going to um, is going to work for us. So obviously that's going to be out of shot to start with. Something like this. And then look, we're getting this nice. This is the bit where we want our really nice animated texture to start the glitching. And then they go up again. So there's a couple of things. We need we need way more particles, but let's just leave it at this for now because we're getting nice playback. Um, so I think the noise, arguably, the noise texture is too big. So let's just go back into our material, back into the noise settings. Let's put this down to, say, 500 or even 400. Oops, not 40, 400. Let's try that. You can see that effect starting to happen, can't you? Um, so I'm going to put that down even lower. 200, and I don't want any animation speed when they're first born. You see, we haven't got enough white here. Um, so let's just raise this up. Let's sort out this clipping a bit. There we go. Try that. We want it to be quite patchy, but not ridiculously so. Ah, so that's looking quite nice. We've got a nice consistent pattern throughout that with various different amounts of, of, of white and black and greys. Good. So what I want me to do is I don't want any animation in this colour texture as it emits. But then as we get to our slow motion point, here's where I want it to start, start glitching. And we'll, we'll do some nice sound design at this point as well to match that glitching. So at frame um, 81 is when we, we start getting our retimed one. So let's just take it. We'll, we'll leave it here for now. We can always move it. Let's animate this uh, animation speed. So we'll put a keyframe on zero. Let's move. It's always a good idea when you're animating the animation speed is to ramp it up. Otherwise, you're going to get a sudden flash as the noise changes immediately. Whereas if we ramp it up, it shouldn't just completely, completely flash. Let's put that on 0.5. And have a look, see how that looks. So there shouldn't be any animation in that noise now. But then when we get to the slow motion bit, and then it starts glitching. And that looks really nice, doesn't it? Um, I think we need to increase that animation speed up to, say, maybe even two. Here we go. Flash, 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 flash. Very good. So you see, when you ramp up the animation speed, there's a slight problem with it, and you've probably seen it. If we watch off, as the animation speed animates up, you get a really fast turnover, whoosh, 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 and then it slows down. So I think to get away from that, what I'm going to do is 
let's try putting the animation speed on quite a high number. Um, but, oh, hang on, sorry, that's wrong. Let's stick it there. Let's put this on a high number. But then let's move that so we're just getting a long ramp all the way up to here. And then we'll animate it back down again. So let's see if that just gives us a nice consistent flash all the way across. Flash, 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 flash. Yeah, that's looking good. That's better, isn't it? That's looking really cool. And then, and then we'll ramp it down at that point as it comes back up to speed here. Let's put a keyframe to zero. So this is our animation. Flash, 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 flash. Love it. And then it's going to ramp back down. Fantastic. Right. So before we um, get onto setting up a camera, let's just uh, emit some more particles because at the moment we've only got 100,000. I think we could probably get away with the more particles you got. Um, the better this is going to look, basically, in the final render. So let's just try 300,000 particles. I'm just going to change the display mode to dots, which will sim a bit more quickly. Now, remember, we haven't cached any of this, so it's having to work out the exposure effects at the same time. So we could actually um, cache the exposure effects sim, um, which would make this stage a little bit easier. So there we've got a nice, and then we're getting this animation. Cool. I'll tell you what we could do as well. I think um, we've got a real ease in and ease out of these um, animation, uh, out of these keyframes. So let's just make that uh, a linear track instead. So, um, well, there's lots of ways of doing this. Let's just go to the material. Let's go to the texture. And this animation speed, this is what we've keyframed. If I right click on that and go to animation, and then I can go to show F curve, which brings up the F curve. And you can see here, these are all um, Bezier. So let's just make it linear. And I think that's going to look a bit better. Let's have a look. So you can see with the more particles and make them smaller, we're getting this really nice kind of wispiness, which is going to look really cool when we do an additive material in cycles. Yeah, so there we've got our changing, glitching of the noise. Looks really nice. Okay, that's looking excellent. Right, so what I'm going to do, let's get this cached now that I'm pleased with, um, now I'm pleased with everything. So let's go to other objects and bring in a cache. Now, I don't actually need to cache the explosion FX explosion because I'm only using it to advect these particles. And so it's just gonna it's just gonna create files that I don't need. It's creating more data. So let's go to the inclusion list and let's just uncheck explosion FX. So it's just going to cache the particles. And I'm gonna exclude the particles that we're using to create the smoke and fire, because we don't need those. It's, it's just our emitted advected that we want to uh, to cache. So that's good. Let's go back to the object tab. So I'm going to cache these as external files. Um, I'll compress cache on build. This compress cache on build will make your cache folder considerably smaller. And by it can be, you know, over 50% smaller if you compress, but it means the cache will take longer to, uh, to, to, to go through, because obviously it's having to compress each frame. So I'm going to just switch that off for now, and we're going to cache all 300 frames. So let's build the cache. And this is going to take, you know, probably about a couple of minutes. So once this is finished, I'll come back, tell you how long it took, and we'll set up the scene. So that took two minutes and three seconds to cache, and it is a 10 gig cache. So that would have been considerably smaller if we'd done compress cache on build. So now those advected particles are cached, I can switch off the exposure, I can switch off the emitters that we use to blow up, uh, the fuel, and now we're just, we can scrub through with our glitchy particles. Fantastic. 
So that's looking really nice. So let's just set up. We're going to do a really uh, basic camera move here. And we'll just set up. I, I think we'll, we'll just have a, a, a kind of a, a camera that's rotating around this sim. Super basic. So what we're going to do is let's click a camera in the view that we're in. And I'm going to bring in a null. And let's just rename this null uh, cam control. So what I can do is make the camera a child of the null. Let's look through the camera. And I'm, I'm actually going to put a protection tag on the camera so I can't move the camera at all. So let's go to Cinema 4D Tags and let's put a protection tag on. So now I can't move even if I want to. So all we're going to do here is if I just move forward to a frame, say here, if I get my cam controller and go coordinates, um, and if, if uh, we just animate the heading angle, you can see that we're rotating around it. So that's dead easy, right? Very nice. So let's just stick that to zero. On frame zero, we will put a keyframe. And right at the end, we'll rotate it by maybe 180 degrees. And we'll probably want this to be a linear animation as well, actually. But let's just see how this looks. And that's just, just a slight bit of movement makes it look, look a bit more interesting. And you'll get a little bit of parallax between the particles um, in the background and in the foreground. So yeah, that's that's looking quite nice. It's arguably rotating a little bit too quickly. Um, I, I am, I'm going to make this a linear track. So let's right click, animation, uh, show F curve. Press Control A to select both of those keyframes and let's hit this to make it a linear move. And we may have to reduce the amount. It might 180 degrees is I mean it's quite a lot, isn't it? It's it's moving around right to the back face. Yeah, so I'm gonna actually change that. I don't want it to be 180. Let's go back to that last frame. Um I think 90 is gonna be enough. There we go. Obviously, you can pay far more attention to do camera moves. Uh, you could do what what would be quite nice would be if you had this camera working like this. And then we, when we get to the point where we get the slow motion, you could do like a snap zoom with then a bit of kind of uh, camera motion as if it was being handheld. That would look quite nice. Um, but we'll just leave it at this gently rotating for now. Excellent. So that's our basic scene. That's all uh, set up within Cinema 4D and X Particles. Now let's move into Cycles 4D to do a really quick but really stylish render of these particles. So here we are in my Cycles 4D layout with the same scene. Here's my viewport with our animated particles which have been cached, got our interactive render region here. The real-time preview is not showing anything because we haven't got any lights in the scene. And I've got my material node editor in this big section at the bottom. So let's just create a Cycles 4D surface and we're going to make it an emission uh, shader. And we're going to make a really easy um, emission shader which works kind of additively. So if there are multiple particles on top of each other, it'll create a really nice um, kind of hot glowing feel. So let's do that. We'll create the surface emission and we'll put that on our, oh, hang on, let's just unfurl our system. So we're going to be rendering our admitted advected particles. So let's just drag this on here. So before I start rendering this, uh, what I'm going to do is put an instance tag on this emitter advected. Now this will just render as is, but what Cycles does, it um, instances by default a sphere for every particle. Now we have 300,000 particles in this scene, so it's going to be making 300,000 spheres, each with 24 segments. So it's making a ton of polygons, which is, is probably going to be quite slow. We don't need to make that many polygons. So what we'll do, let's go to tags, cycles 4D tags and add an instance tag. Uh, 
And then this allows us to control those instances that Cycles is going to make. So look, by default, we've got Sphere with segments of, of 24. So what we could do to make this quicker, let's just bring a cube into the scene. And the cube, the coordinates, I'm just going to put it miles away. And the cube, I am also going to give... Um, well, actually, we'll put that emission material that we just made and we're going to put it on the cube instead of the particles and then in the instance um, tag I'm going to drag in the cubes now it's going to be making cubes instead of spheres and the cubes have got far fewer polygons so it should work a little bit um, uh, more quickly the cube is pretty big at the moment so before we hit render let's just reduce the size of it way down to say 5% so now let's hit render and see what we get there's the, so the cubes are still too big, you can see. Um, they're massive. So that's in the cube. Let's just change it down to, say, 50, 50, and 50. And then cycles will recalculate. So oh, they're still way too big, aren't they? Um, let's go 5, 5, and 5. There we go. So we're starting to look because we're rendering them so small, the the they're not going to look huge in the scene. They're not they're not going to look cubic. So let's go back to our instance tag, and they could even be even smaller. Let's do them at two percent, and let's put some size variation of twenty percent in there. Okay. So you can see straight away, just by putting a white emission, emissive material on there, it looks quite kind of silky and quite smoky. But what we want to do is use some of these black and white colours that we got from animating that noise texture on our plane. So the way we do that is it's really simple. At the moment, our emission texture is just, here's the output node, and we've got the emission um, shader going into the surface and it just has a color and a strength and that's it so if we put the strength up obviously it'll be shining more brightly and it, it glows more um, so let's just leave that on the default one for now and we could just change the color so every particle would be the same color but instead what we want to do is take the particle color that we have cached and stick it into this color input so let's right click go and input menu and we want a particle info node. And this is all of the um, info that we're able to get out of that particle. All of these things the particle carries, we want the color. So if I pipe the color into the uh, color input, now it is giving the darker particles are darker and the lighter particles are lighter. So that's kind of looking interesting. So we're going to adjust these. We're not just going to have it be have it be black and white. But what I want to do is make this like an additive material. So what we need to do is really easy to set up this. What we'll do is we'll right click and we'll go to shader and we want an add shader. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the uh, emission shader with a transparent shader. So let's right click shader and bring in a transparent. If we add these together, this will now become an additive material. And you see the areas where there are multiple particles, it starts to give this kind of glowing additive effect because we've got that transparency. So that's pretty cool. So finally, what we want to do is we just want to add a bit of color. So what we can do is we can take this black and white color output and apply it to a gradient and then remap it to make it colorful. So what we'll do is right click. We've got the converter, color ramp, and stick that in there. Okay, so it doesn't look much different. But what we're able to do now is edit this color ramp. So let's just, I'll pull that down a bit. So let's, we could just do it with a preset. So let's load a preset. And I mean, look, there's all kinds of it's ridiculous uh, temperature warm. And now it's completely remapped those colors. So the black ones have been turned blue and the white ones have been gone back to blue as well on this side. In fact, let's just get rid of those blue values. Um, and it'll re-update. 
So most of it's happening within this range of our gradient, but that's okay. So let's, we don't obviously don't want this, so let's just take that one off and we'll go with, we'll go with this one, which is looking nice. The white is probably a little too white. Let's take that one out. And let's just, with this knot, let's make it a bit darker. With additive materials, it always makes things look a lot lighter because uh, obviously the values are adding. So we'll just darken it up a bit. All right, that's looking quite interesting now. And let's just see if we can add, instead of this one, let's see if we can add a little bit more green into there. got a bit of a green hint now which is looking pretty nice so I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger now let's increase the size I'm looking at up to 70% okay so that's looking nice so what we want to do I think perhaps what we could do is in our instance tag we can make these a bit bigger more variation okay good and let's just put that emission strength down a bit okay and now we could do with some we really need some um, shallower depth of field in here which is really going to make this pop so let's get our camera that we've locked off we need to make it a cycles camera so we'll go to tags cycles 4d tags and add a camera now this will allow us to if we go to the settings tab to the depth of field size and just increase that it will blur out those particles now they've all gone out of focus so let's go to the camera object tab we've got a focus distance picker so i'm going to just take that i'm going to pick these particles in the front that's brought them into focus so now what I can do is add a little bit of a shallower depth of field okay that's looking nice and I think we could even make that emission a bit stronger we want it to look like it's glowing a little now if we wanted to we could add some glow in cycles now i would normally not do this in the render if i wanted to add glows i'd do that in the composition um, stage the compositing stage uh, but you can do it in cycles should you wish if you just want to get it out in one render if we go to the camera tag post effects I can apply a bloom which is going to be a bit over the top but you can see we've got this glow if I increase the threshold so only the brighter bits are glowing there we go Let me push up that intensity so there we can mess around and get a bit of a glow happening um, should you wish you can reduce that radius down a bit so it's a tighter a tighter glow and that's going to give you a glowing look but again I wouldn't uh, bother with this in the render time I would uh, much rather be adding glow effects in post so let's deselect that okay so the final thing that we're able to do here is add a little bit of motion blur in cycles um, that now just bear in mind that motion blur will substantially increase your render times because it's having to make lots of calculations per frame to get that motion blur to work so it has to look at the preceding frame and the frame after the one it's actually rendering to get the motion blur to work correctly and so it vastly increases the calculations that, that, that are made but we can do that let's just go to our render settings We'll change the renderer from standard to cycles. And in cycles, well, let's just set this up for, for render, actually, because we've been looking at the preview. Let's just get it rendered out. So the device, I want to change it from CPU to CUDA. And I'm going to, we can ignore all of this tiles and leave that by default. So ignore the performance for now. The samples is really important. Now in my real-time preview, I've got the samples set to 20, which is looking pretty decent. Um, I'm going to put this up to 30 for final render output. And everything else I'm going to leave as it is. Let's activate motion blur. Okay. 
and then we'll go to our output. So the output, I'm just going to render it at 720p to get it out quickly. I'm going to render all frames, and then let's go to save. I'm going to render these as OpenEXR, and I'm actually going to put it down as just as a 16-bit channel. And in fact, in the OpenEXR, you've got options here. Um, so yeah, so we've got compression. So that's it. We want a lossy EXR. It'll still carry lots of information. So it's going to look great. And um, we'll put my file save location here. And I think we're pretty much ready to go. Right, so we'll start that rendering. And when it's finished, I'll show you the finished result and tell you exactly how long it took. So here we are in the picture viewer and that render took two hours and 10 minutes at 720p for just under 300 frames. So let's just play that through from the beginning. So we've got our initial burst of particles and then we've got the re-timed, we've got this really nice flashing glitch as the noise is affecting the colour of those particles and then it bursts back into full speed. So that's looking pretty nice. I think the um, slow motion part lasts for too many frames so I'd do fewer of that and I think also at this section I think what would have been nice was it, it, it um, as soon as the animation starts back into full speed the animation of the noise stops and I think we could have had a bit of that ramping down so it was still animating slowly here down to zero so we didn't get this sudden jerk of the colours going back but, um, but all the same looks pretty nice um, let's just run that through that again so we've got, you can see the nice milkiness of the motion blur that we got from that. And then we've got this really nice animated noise as we get this pulsating colours throughout our particles. Um, and obviously in the composition, we'll do a bit of um, colour correction on this. Let's just have a look in the filter in uh, the picture viewer. And uh, look, let's just do it really basically. Add a little bit of contrast to make it look more kind of luminance uh, and we can even add a bit more saturation to really make those colors pop and that's looking really nice so we've got this first initial start then this lovely little kind of glitch flickering and then back into full speed so that is it one really nice recreation of mario scenes but remember this uv emission data doesn't need to just be used for animated noises it can be used to project any animated texture onto particles including you know animated graphics it could be video shots it could be whatever and you could also use these to map various different modifiers so incredibly powerful technique i hope you enjoy that one and I look forward to seeing what you do with it.